In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to personalize emails that get sent to multiple recipients. So if you want to avoid uh, exposing email addresses, a list of email addresses to every person, you want emails to go to one person at a time and be able to customize the content of the email, for example, saying hello first name rather than a generic, you know, hello everyone, uh, we're going to use API workflows to make this happen. So. Uh, the first thing you need to do is go over to your apps settings and then to the API section. Make sure that your workflow API is enabled. When you do that, you will see at the bottom of your page drop down list API workflows. Um, that section will become available to you. Now, your API workflow section is completely separate and independent from any other page in your application. So, creating an endpoint here. Um, means that you're going to be scheduling a workflow to happen on the server. Uh, the user doesn't necessarily need to be around or have a page open for the workflow to run. They do need to be around to, to schedule it in the first place. Um, but this does allow you to uh, make things happen in the future. Um, but it also allows you to do more powerful customizations and um, run workflows on big lists of things. Um, and that's what we're taking advantage of here. So I'm going to create an endpoint by clicking there, new endpoint, and we'll give it a name. I'm just going to say send email. That's my endpoint name. Make sure there are no spaces there. And we're going to add parameters. So again, because your API workflow section is separate from your page, you need to help the endpoint um, by passing data to it. If it's going to use any information from the page that originally triggers it, for example, I have a test page here where I have got a button to send uh, an email invite to you know, a certain number of friends or something like that, um, I need this page to communicate with my endpoint uh, so that the endpoint knows who's receiving the email and maybe what other values might need to be included in the email. So we'll do that through parameters. So I'll create a parameter for uh, the recipient, which will be a type user in, in this case because a uh, user has an email address, the user also has a field for the first name, that's how I've set up my database. Notice that this is one recipient. Uh, set to one type of user, it is not a list. This is because when we click the button to send an invite, what we're telling Bubble to do is to loop through this endpoint for every recipient in our list. So it's actually going to run this multiple times, once for each recipient. So this workflow, whatever you create here, is going to be um, unique to each individual person. Um, and it's going to run through it however many times it needs to, depending on the size of your list. So when you construct this, think of it as it's going through for one person at a time. Okay, so you don't want to pass a list of recipients to this endpoint. You just want to pass one because it will go through it multiple times, once for each recipient. Um, so now I'm going to create um, my send email action. And here the two, the, the recipient field will pull from my parameter recipients email. Okay, the sender name can be, um, you know, your app name or, you know, your name, the maybe the name of the person who triggered the action. So I'm just going to hard code some information there. This could also be pulled from um, another parameter if you wanted to create, you know, sender uh, parameter like that because this user would be a different user. Uh, we'll add that parameter and I can insert this instead, sender's name, something like that. Subject, we can say you're invited. This is an invite email. And here's where we can also start to personalize the email. We can say a hi, recipients, first name, and you've been invited to the app. Thanks. Okay, and of course, I mean, this is a very basic example, but you can see how with the parameters, uh, it will receive whatever dynamic information per recipient. That way, the email can be customized to that person only. So how do we trigger this endpoint? This is where everything is happening, but it's got to get um, scheduled at some point. So that's where this button comes into play from some page in your application. Let's say the user is filling out a form um, and or they select uh, their friends that they want to send this email to and they click the button to submit and, and uh, schedule the email. So when we create um, 
I'm going to click this button and the action you want to go to is schedule an API workflow on a list. And this is where uh, your setup for how this workflow is going to happen um, gets put together. So the type of things is referring to the type of list items. In my case, I am running this on a list of users. So I want to select user for my type of things and the list to run on, this can be anything. So I can do a search for users um, you know, with some constraint. If you have maybe a repeating group on the page that has been filtered down and that's the list of users that you wanna use, you could do you know, the result of the repeating group. Uh, it could be a custom state, it could be any, any list of users anywhere in your application, whether it's on the page or in the database, that's what you can put here. But essentially this is the list of recipients in our example uh, for this email example here that um, uh, will be receiving the email. The API workflow is simply the endpoint that you set up here, send email. So that's that one, and then you'll need to schedule, uh, have, include the schedule date and time. And you can do current date and time for it to happen immediately. So it doesn't necessarily have to be scheduled for some time in the future. You can just leave it at that. So as soon as I click this button, it will immediately um, run that endpoint. And then here you can see are the parameters that I created um, that we need to pass through. So the recipient in this case is going to be this user. This is referring to each individual user in our list, okay? And then the sender, um, in this example, is gonna be the current user. So this will be the same for everybody because the current user will always be the current user when you trigger this workflow. Um, but the recipient here is gonna be different because this list of people, they are, they are different from each other. They're not the same person. Um, you can leave the interval blank that will let bubble space things out on its own or you can force it to have some kind of a um, number of seconds spacing between each item. This would mean that Bubble's going to wait five seconds before it runs the workflow on the next user and send the email to the next person. Um, if you have a big list, you want to um, give this some breathing room and maybe give it a little bit more time. Uh, if you have a big list or if you have a really complicated workflow. So let's say that sending an email is not the only thing that happens in this workflow, but maybe you have 20, 15, you know, actions after this that do all sorts of things. Uh, adding some spacing can keep your um, uh, application healthy and you won't have any capacity issues. And that's pretty much how it works. So when you click this button, send invite, um, it will schedule the API endpoint to run at some point in time, whether it's right now or sometime in the future. You're going to tell it who you're running this list on, some list of users. For every item in the list, it's going to run through this workflow. So if you have 10 people in your list, it's going to run through this 10 times. And because you've sent the parameter for, um, you've added a parameter for a recipient um, to be passed through, and you're defining the recipient value as um, each individual user in the list, you can now personalize your email so that it can pull from each individual person's name, their email, and that way um, this email is just going to them. They're not getting the same email that you know the next person in the list gets. Um, you know, if the values are different, it's going to be customized to them only. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you can stay updated with all of the tutorials and learning how to build your application. Thanks so much for watching.